All right. Okay. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday and welcome to Badass College Apps, um, where we talk about applying to college and then we stop and take a breath. And I want everybody to do that with me. Let's just take a breath. Mostly need to do that for me because talking in front of people uh, makes me super nervous. So I'm so excited to um, have Scholar Grade here with me today, um, the uh, amazing college consultant who helps us out on applying to college. And he has so much wisdom to share with you today as we talk about kind of the unfortunate reality that sometimes kids get rescinded from uh, their admissions. So we're going to be talking about that today. And we also have Carly. So I'm going to just let you guys introduce yourselves for a second, Scholar Grade. Why don't you stop and just tell us a little bit about you and where the kids can find you if they want to reach out to you. Sure. Yeah, cool. So uh, my name is Mark. Uh, I run a college admissions consulting company with my wife, Bethany. Uh, it's called uh, Better College Apps. Uh, you can find us at bettercollegeapps.com. Uh, our Reddit profile is probably more famous. Uh, Scholar Grade uh, is, is my Reddit handle. Uh, Mrs. Scholar Grade is hers. And, um, and you know, we've been doing this, I guess, for six or seven years now. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe six years now. Uh, just helping guide students through the process, uh, helping them find compelling content to put into their applications and uh, trying to just, you know, a little bit like Admissions Mom does, make it less stressful, uh, give you a little bit more professional expertise uh, to, to navigate it. So uh, I'm excited to join today and, uh, and, and talk about uh, how, you, how, how you can keep those acceptances once you've gotten them. Yeah, and he's he doesn't just do a little bit about making it less stressful. You help a lot with making it less stressful by providing such great information in a really accessible, fun, you know, way for the kids. I I, I love your, all your content, and I, as you know, I share it a lot too because That's it's awesome. so good. Um, and Carly, tell us a little bit about you. Hi, I'm Carly. I'm currently a freshman in college. I'm one of the moderators of R slash Applying College, and I also own the Discord server. So if you want to talk to me, you can find me on both Reddit and Discord. And I'm also majoring in marketing. So if you have an interest in that, you're free to talk to me about that too. Yeah. And Carly is helping me out with these, um, what are they? These live streams. So I'm so happy to have her here helping me out. She'll be in the chat with you. Um, those of you in the chat, I'm so happy to see you here. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know if Crafty is here right now, but I love his comment that, or their comment that was here from the beginning. This is going to be epic. Pretty sure nobody has ever told me anything I was going to do is be epic, going to be epic. So, you know, that makes me feel really good. Although it was probably meant for scholar grade. And let's see, Nathaniel. Daniel, thanks for being here. And yeah, let's go. Let's talk about this. So those of you in the chat, why don't you let us know where you're from and what's going on with you today? And let's just make sure we kind of, if you have any questions you want to start off asking us, we would love to answer them. And then we're going to get to it and start talking. Yes, you are definitely going to get the opportunity to ask questions at any time. Um, feel free to chat with each other at any time. I, I'm going to tell you, a big part of my goal in this live stream is to create a community of kids who want to apply to college in an intentional way, you know, with really taking the time to take care of themselves, why they apply to college. And part of building a community is, you know, having a, 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 a I guess, a place for you to communicate and talk. So um, that's what we're here for. I guess I forgot to introduce myself, though. So I'm going to do that. I'm admissions mom. I'm also Carolyn. Um, and yeah, that's Carly, the A2C mod. I'm going to put that up there. That's one of our Discord mods. Yay! <laughs> Hi, um, so uh, I'm Admissions Mom. You can find me at www.admissionsmom.college. You can find me on Instagram and you can find me on Reddit and you can find me on Twitter. So mm -hmm. any of those places, please reach out to me. I am open for DMs and happy to answer your questions um, at any time. I'm a huge believer in college access and trying to make the process easier for you. So let's just see here. I'm going to put this question up. So do colleges rescind for mid-year grades typically? If a student's mid-year grades are rescindable, will the college typically give the student the chance to improve 
over the second semester? That's a great question. Mark, you want to take it from the beginning sure. and then we can. Yeah. So the answer, bit. do colleges rescind for mid-year grades? Typically. The, the first thing I want to say is that like typically, no, nobody gets rescinded. Typically. The typical thing is you get your admission and then you go to orientation over the summer and you are like, wow, this is such a cool college. And then you go there in the fall and then you take classes and then you graduate and you have an amazing life. Like that is typical. So I don't want anybody to walk into a conversation about rescinded admission thinking that this happens all the time, that this is something that they need to like be especially uh, cautious about, that they need to set up a five-step plan to avoid it. Like there, there, there's nothing you need to do uh, to go out of your way to avoid rescinded admission uh, because it's not typical. The whole thing about this is that it's not a typical thing. However, it does happen. And so that's one of the things we want to talk about because if this conversation helps prevent even one person from having this happen to them, it will have been worth it. Um, it is a terrible thing. I have worked with students. Uh, no one that has worked with me, you know, during that admission cycle, but I've worked with students for whom this happened to them and they're trying to figure out how do I get back on track. Uh, and there are some ways you can do that. We'll talk about that maybe a little bit later. But uh, regarding this question, mid-year grades, yes, absolutely. They will rescind you over mid-year grades. If they offer, uh, if you apply early, uh, let's say you applied in November, the the decision results came out in mid-December and then the, the grades were not uh, consistent with what they had seen uh, in your transcript up to that point. That could absolutely be a reason for them to say, you know, hey, we got your mid-year report here in early January and like this just isn't, this, this doesn't even look like the same student, like what happened? Now, usually they will not just step in and drop that bomb on you. They won't just be like, you've been rescinded, have a nice life. Uh, usually there will be some kind of conversation. There will be, uh, they'll reach out to your guidance counselor, potentially they'll send you an email and say, hey, we noticed there are some abnormalities in your application. We'd love to get a chance to hear your story. Because what they want to do is like, they're human, you're human, and they understand that. And so they want to see, you know, like, were there some kind of extenuating circumstances? Did something happen? Were you injured or sick? You know, did was there a reason why these grades are not, you know, uh, what they would have expected? Uh, and then, you know, if if a mid year if their mid year grades are rescindable, uh, then what they'll usually do is they'll say either uh, we're sorry, we've had to terminate your offer of admission and cancel it. Uh, you know, wish you all the best, and and we regret to and it's just kind of a re we regret to inform you 2.0, right? Um, but sometimes they'll say, we want to try to figure out a way to get you back on track. And so what that might entail is we're going to look at your senior year, second semester grades. And if they are up to par, then we will, uh, you know, give you that spot back. You can earn it back. Or they might say, if by the fall, you're able to take a course over the summer to make up for, let's say, so for example, let's say you failed a course, right? That was a required course. So for example, many engineering programs require calculus. If you failed calculus, they can't admit you. Like that just might be part of how it works, right? So they, if you fail calculus, they're going to say, hey, you, you're going to need that credit in order to matriculate in our program. So uh, they'll tell you, you could take a summer course. Uh, and if you report that grade to us, we'll save a spot for you. Um, additionally, some colleges, there are other things that could happen. Um, you know, um, I don't know, I don't want to speculate, but there's there's a million different things that could come up that could cause a, a college to sort of give a, a fire a few shots over the bow or, or warn uh, warn students about uh, the, the po possibility of being rescinded. Uh, so you'll definitely want to pay attention to that uh, if, if that does happen to you. Yeah, I think that's a great answer. The only thing I'm going to add to that, and I think you touched on this a little bit, was that it, they will more most likely give you an opportunity to explain. But I think, and, and Mark, you can give your opinion about this, and then we're going to get to the slides in a second. But I feel like for kids, when your grades really tank, like really tank, I'm not talking about a B plus here, like your grades have really tanked. I think you need to get ahead of it. I think you need to address it before they do. What do you think, Mark, about that? I agree with that. Yeah. Um, wh where I would probably say, um, <laughs> so this gets, this gets a little bit strategic. Um, and, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to advocate misleading the admissions office at all, but it is easier to retain an admission offer that has been given than it is to obtain a new one that has not been given. So if you're going to update them and say, Hey guys, just so you know, my grades aren't so great. It's usually better if you wait until after they've said, yes, we want you. And you, we want you to be part of our class. Then you mm -hmm. say, Hey, just so you know, like in-flight grades looking a little rocky, 
I've been working with my teachers. I've talked to my guidance counselor or even have your guidance counselor reach out and explain and advocate for you because sometimes that can be a really good, um, you know, you get a, a qualified adult advocating on your behalf. It really can throw some weight in your corner and help you, uh, you know, sort of get that message across uh, a little bit more, a little bit more strongly. Um, but yes, I do think that being proactive about it shows responsibility. It shows that you understand that this is kind of an abnormal thing and is a problem and that you are taking steps to, to address exactly. it yourself. That initiative can be very powerful and yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. So I have put together some slides that we're just going to kind of talk about a little bit. But in the meantime, before I before I we start going through those, those of you in the chat, I'd love to know where you're from, at least what part of the world you're from. Um, as I'm trying to figure out the best time to do this right now, it's Wednesday where I am. Um, and, and where Mark is and Carly, we're, we're all in the US. So it's Wednesday. But I know we have... Um, people who have been watching from all over the world. So is it Wednesday for you <laughs> or is it Thursday? Like, where are you from? If you want to let us know, that'd be great. Um, so we can kind of just see Chicago. Nice. So it's Wednesday for you too. And let's see if anybody else is there. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll start talking. Okay. So let's talk about being rescinded. Here's what you really need to know. And I have some slides put together with some information. I'm not going to read them because you can read them yourselves, but we're just going to use those as touching points to start talking. The first one is that, yeah, it can happen. Um, it is not common. It's, you know, as Mark said, it's not common. It doesn't happen all the time, but it definitely happens. I, you know, Mark said he's worked with some kids who have been, you know, face being rescinded. I have too. Um, you know, when they come find us after it happens and to kind of help them kind of like negotiate what to do. So it is a real thing that you need to be aware of, but not worried about and not afraid of. So keep your grades up. And that's the main thing that, um, that this, the person who was just asking about that and that Mark was talking about. So keep your grades up definitely even through the second semester. Um, throughout, not only do you need to have your grades up in case you're waitlisted, but also to have your grades up. And here's this rule of thumb that I use, and Mark, I want to talk to you about this too, mm -hmm. is um, don't go down over one letter grade per class and don't do that in more than a class or two. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have an A average, then you don't want to go down to a C for more than a class or two. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, that's that's pretty consistent with what I've seen and heard over the years. I think um, you can actually see some some schools that you mentioned this UC student. Some schools do actually publish a a, a a guideline, right? So the UCs have a rule that says if you get a D or an F, then your admission is subject to to uh, being rescinded and canceled, and uh, it will automatically get flagged for review. So if you get a D or an F, they will review your file. Now they may decide that there are extenuating circumstances. They may decide, nah, this isn't a big deal that you got to an F in gym because you were visiting colleges or whatever, right? Um, they're they're, they're, they're going to be human about that too. Uh, one thing that I think is important to remember is that colleges don't want to rescind anyone, right? Like their goal when they, when they say, hey, we want to admit you, they picked you out of many, many, many other people they could have had instead. So like they wanted you, uh, so they don't want to then go back on that uh, unless there's a reason that tells them they have to, right? Um, and so... Uh, I think this is a pretty good rule of thumb. Um, I know the University of Michigan had a similar rule. If you had three C's or lower, then that could be uh, flag your, your your account for review, your profile for review. Um, and I think that those are sort of like just their automatic cutoffs. Uh, you technically could be subject to uh, review for, for other things. Um, I'll, uh, I had this on my mind to share. Uh, about three years ago, Columbia uh, University sent out letters threatening students over I two know. Bs. I remember uh, that on their mid-year report, and like I was angry over that. I remember uh, that too. <laughs> You're threatening these kids' lives at this point because so many of yeah. them have poured everything about their life into college admissions. They finally get into Columbia. They get an early decision where that means they've already committed, right? right. And they're going to intend. And then you're saying, oh, wait, at any minute, we might pull the plug on you because you got two Bs. And like these were both of these students had Bs on their on their transcript before. It's not like they were 4.0 students all the way through. Uh, and right. then suddenly you know, they got to be out of nowhere and Columbia suddenly decided that perfection is the standard. So, right. you know, so that, I thought that was kind of crappy of them to do that. Um, and, and, and none of those students ended up getting uh, rescinded. Um, so, so I think my read on the situation was that Columbia was just trying to warn students and make them like, you know, give them a little, 
you know, light a little bit of a fire under them to, to stay engaged in, in academically. Um, but it also just r really rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, I would say, generally speaking, A's and B's are probably going to be fine. Uh, even if you get several Bs, you're probably going to be okay. Uh, they're not going to come in and say, hey, you got four Bs, and, and that's just not consistent with what we've seen, and, and we don't think that you belong here anymore. Um, more, more likely, uh, it's when you get Cs, Ds, and Fs, and, and more than one of them that you end up in, right. in trouble. Yeah, and even then, you're going to more than likely have a chance to explain. I um, worked with a student a few years ago who – um, had a D on her application. She'd been accepted in Stanford early and had a D on her transcript from second semester. So she reached out to me um, in the summer and um, they wanted, they asked her to explain her grades. They didn't tell her she was being rescinded, but they definitely wanted an explanation. And she had a great reason. You know, she had all this family stuff going on and she was having to help her mom take care of the family. And she just literally did not have time to do everything she needed to do. And so she really wrote, wrote a great letter explaining her situation. And, you know, and then she wasn't rescinded. So don't feel like you shouldn't explain yourself. You know, if you have a good reason for your grades going down, then definitely explain. Like, mm -hmm. Use that opportunity. At least you're taking a, a, a you know, a shot at it. Mm -hmm. Let me put this one up here. Let's see. Here's so going from a straight A student to one with all A's except for Pat, perhaps two to three B's in semester two grades will not get you rescinded anywhere. Minus Columbia, I guess. Right. Yeah, I, and I'd say that's yeah. correct, including Columbia, actually. Yeah, me Columbia too. Columbia was just sending out a warning. And I think what Columbia didn't want to have happen is for these students to think, oh, I don't have to worry about grades anymore because I've been admitted, so I can get Ds or, or whatever. Right. You know, yeah. D is for diploma, I'll be fine. And then and then they end up in a, in a really bad situation. So I think Columbia was probably just trying to err on the side of caution, but like I still thought it was, was kind of not the right way to go about it. Right. Increasing stress unnecessarily for kids who are already super stressed. Bingo. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about some other reasons. Um, so this is actually, this is one thing I wanted to kind of, I was just talking about. So um, explain your situation. So it's not making an excuse. I hear kids all the time saying, you know, I can't like, I don't want them to like feel like I'm whining or making excuses for my behavior. They understand that people have lives. They know that you are human beings and that you have lives going on. So be transparent about what's happening if you need to. If your grades went down because, especially if your grades went down because you had limited access to the internet and technology because of school and you were in and out of school, live and in per not in person, or if you had COVID in your family or you've had mental health issues or mental health issues in your family or economic hardships, those are all real issues. And the admissions consult counselors for the colleges are very aware of this. Mm -hmm. So they understand, be prepared to explain because what happens in your life is really important and it matters. Mm -hmm. And they tell me, and I listen and I ask this question all the time. They want to know. So, yeah. you know, get out there. Anything to add to that? No. Um, the only other thing I'd add is that they're, they're absolutely like they, they would rather you over explain than under explain as far as, as far as understanding what's going on. Absolutely. Um, because w what they don't want is obviously somebody who, I don't know, just decided like, I'm done with this. I got admitted. So I'm just going to sail off into the sunset and just goes out and, you know, parties all the time and right. doesn't ever study anymore. And they get straight F's and like, that's going to be a problem, right? Uh, that shows that you're not actually the kind of student that they thought you were or that they're looking for to add to their college community. Um, but if you or a family member got sick, if, you know, there was some kind of other issue, that's not really a, an indictment of your character. And so it's really important that you kind of demonstrate like, hey, I'm still the same kid that you loved and fell in love with and accepted in the admissions office. Right. I, I'm just going through some things. And, and these aren't things that are like permanent, uh, usually. And even if they are, like maybe you're figuring out ways to, to, to handle them better and, and you can explain that. Uh, but there's a lot of different strategies, I think, for um, getting the admissions office to understand the situation. All these things that are listed on this slide are excellent examples uh, of, of the kinds of things that you might want to talk about. Yeah. And, and even then kind of you talk about your situation briefly, it kind of goes back to our more Phoenix, less fire. So, yeah. you know, like more Phoenix, less fire is where you briefly explain the situation and then you talk about your growth and what you've learned from it, no matter how hard it is to deal with. So what have you learned and why is that going to make you a better college um, student on their campus? 
All right. So now we're going to get to some other reasons. So social media. Um, this one seems to catch quite a few kids. And I've heard from families um, of quite a few kids who've had problems with this. Um, just be careful on social media. Um, I love Jeff Schiffman, who's the former um, Tulane admissions director, says the most frequent reason that I rescind admissions is dumb stuff you do on social media. Mm -hmm. More than grades, it's this dumb stuff. So it's not like they're sitting out there trolling social media. You know what? They don't have to because somebody is going to send them something. And that's what's happened to the kids that I know. Mm -hmm. Somebody they know sends a screenshot or something else. So just don't be a jerk, basically. Um, if your social media is messy, I would clean it up right away. Like delete anything. It doesn't mean somebody didn't screenshot it already, but clean it up right away and, you know, start getting there. <laughs> I mean, start getting it in good shape. Um, what do you say, Mark? Yeah, uh, totally agree. Um, first off, be careful with what's out there uh, about you that's tied to you that you've posted, that you've shared. Make sure that, uh, it, think about it from the perspective of, do I want this sh coming up in my job interview? Do I want this coming up in my college admissions or scholarship interview? Do I want this coming up in a conversation with my mother, my grandmother, my, you know, member of the clergy that I that I talk to, like if or, or teacher, if that would feel uncomfortable in any way, you probably should take that out. Right. So anything that uses uh, illegal uh, substances, anything that is, um, let's say, insensitive in, in really almost any way toward any group of people, that's probably not worth sharing. There's just not enough upside. Uh, even if you decide you want to get into, you know, some kind of political debate, there are many political debates raging right now where people veer off of the, the discourse and into ad hominem attacks against each other. And it results in some pretty unsavory things coming up. And like, that's just not necessary. Don't do that right now. Wait until, you know, later in life, if you want to, <laughs> like, if that's really your thing, like, just don't do it now. Um, you know, I, I think uh, one of the biggest things, uh, you know, I went to college when social media was just uh, was just kind of starting, like Facebook was still the Facebook.com when I signed up for it, it dates me a little bit. But um, one of the things that our, our uh, one of our one of our academic advisors would say all the time is like sanitize your Facebook, like go in once a month and just make sure there's nothing in there that you don't want someone who is evaluating you for an internship, for a scholarship, for a research position, for a job to see, because it's just not worth it. There's no, there's almost no upside and there's very real negative downside in how it can impact your life. Um, another thing I would say is that you probably don't need to like overly panic on this. It doesn't mean that you can't participate in social media. It doesn't mean that if you said one bad thing one time when you were 13 and you know you regret it now that like that's going to haunt you um but it absolutely has happened where uh, you know there was a pretty high high profile case i think 3 years ago where a bunch of students who had been admitted to harvard were sharing um insensitive memes on a facebook group and i think what, so, several dozen of them ended up losing their spots at harvard yeah uh, and so you know like it it can happen and it can come for you if you're not vigilant and and making sure you're holding yourself accountable for the things that you're sharing and saying online yeah basically just don't be a jerk i mean right. that's the main thing you know if you're a nice person then and if you're a kind person and you're thinking about others uh, i know it's easy on social media when you can kind of be somewhat anonymous but you know just don't be a jerk i mean that's the main thing that's what those kids that, who had been admitted to harvard were being real jerks um and somebody sent screenshots to Harvard admissions and they were rescinded. Um, so Nathaniel says, I'm going to get rescinded once they see how much time I spend on A2C. Uh, I don't think so, Nathaniel. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, I, I there, first of all, I doubt if they, unless somebody sends a screenshot and they could connect it to you, but you know, on A2C, we don't really allow really jerky behavior. Um, but yeah, it's, and we're happy that you're there with us too. So let's see. All right. So I'm going to token popcorn has another question about grades. So let's just go ahead and address that while we're here. Will colleges begin to request information from students about bad grades because of third quarter grades or do they get access to your grades and can see every input to the grade book? Ah, great question. So yeah. usually they can't see everything. Usually they will only see uh, what your your counselor sends or what you are required to share with them. So most most high schools have what they call a mid-year report, 
Uh, they're, they're very, the, the guidance office at your high school is very well versed in how this works. Uh, they know every college that you've applied to. They probably even have a system plugged into the Common App to do this automatically, or at least the sophisticated ones will. And what it does is it basically just ships off a, 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 a document to the admissions office that says, you know, here's the student, here's what their mid-year grades look like. Quarter grades are almost never reported uh, unless there would be some kind of situation where that's how the school, your school does it. Uh, so this would be, if you're worried about this for yourself, uh, go talk to your guidance counselor and just say, hey, do you guys send third quarter grades or, or, or not? And if they don't send third quarter grades, then you wouldn't need to worry about the quarter grade. Um, now, obviously, if you're bombing third quarter grades, uh, fourth quarter grades are coming. And that day of reckoning will come when the fourth quarter ends and they see the semester grade. Uh, and you'll want to make sure that that grade is going to be consistent with what would allow you to retain admission. So, uh, so start working on that now. Start trying to put in a little more effort in the classes that you're failing or that you're struggling in. Uh, talk to your teachers. See if there's anything they can do to help you. Talk to your guidance counselor. As uh, admissions mom mentioned, Think about being proactive. Should you reach out to the school and just say, hey, I have this thing going on. It's kind of impacting my grades right now, but like I'm going to get it under control and I, I remain committed to, you know, figuring this out. Um, so that's that's probably the, the playbook I would I would recommend there. Yeah. And for the second part of your question, I'm pretty sure they don't have access to your grades and can I'm um, no, no, they can't see every input to your grade book now. They only see what you or your counselor send to them. Correct. So and that's definitely not the grade book. So if you, you know, if you bomb a test, they're not going to know about that. You know, they're, they're, they're just going to see the final grades. Let's see, where is that one? Let me hide it. Um, okay. So I'm just going to go through these questions and then we'll go on a little bit. Um, Youth PSA asks, would you guys have, have happen to have information on the rescinding policies for particular colleges, particularly UPenn? I do not. Do you? I don't either. Uh, I know some colleges will post their policy because they want it out there so that they can point to it and say, hey, guys, be careful. This is our policy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but other colleges just sort of will have a blurb on their site somewhere that says, we, you know, admission is conditional on, you know, maintaining the um, academic and uh, personal um, kind of uh, performance or, or, or standards that uh, that that got you admitted and we reserve the right to cancel offers of admission at any time. Right. So they kind of, they kind of fence that, uh, in, but, uh, no, I would say most of the time colleges prefer not to have a strict cut and dry system around it. Uh, particularly because there are things that happen. Sometimes your dad loses his job, you get COVID, you, you get injured, you know, whatever. Like there's a, a million things that can happen. Uh, your laptop dies the day that you're going to turn in a final paper and then you lose all your work and then your teacher doesn't believe you. You know, I mean, whatever. There's a million things that can happen, right? That can go wrong in life. That, that's life. And colleges want to make sure that they're able to be flexible and work with you on that rather than just say, well, too bad for you. You know, we're, we're, we're removing your offer. Right. Okay. So this is, and he addresses what you're saying. If an acceptance letter says this acceptance is conditional on your final report, does that mean they can, won't rescind based on mid-year grades if accepted EAED? Uh, probably, right? I mean, yeah. They would, they would potentially be able to rescind you for either your mid-year report or your final reports uh, come, you know, May or June. Uh, so there's, there is a wave of rescinded admissions that goes around the country, uh, at the end of the semester too, because some colleges will ask for updates on, you know, what your final grades were. And if students really did really badly, then they could lose their admission offer in June. Yeah. And then he, youth also says, as you can probably tell, I'm in a tricky situation with my first semester grades, but I have reason to believe my final grades will be considerably better. Uh, I mean, we don't know the certain circumstances of your grades, youth, but you know, if you feel that you need to get out in front of it and explain to them and then explain how your final grades are going to be better, you might want to consider doing that. So did they, was your mid-semester, were your mid-semester grades sent to them? I would assume so, right? Aren't they sent usually? Usually, or they'll ask for, uh, for you to upload it to your portal or something. Yeah. Usually it's your counselor sends that in. And I want to go back to you here, youth, because I want to make sure you understand that, like, your grades would really have to be pretty tanked, you know, kind of like two, you know, two levels below and more than one of those, I think, for it to be an issue. Mm -hmm. I, I see kids all the time on A2C who are really worried about a couple of Bs or a B plus even. And, and that is not something that you want to be worried about. 
All right, let's see. Let me figure out where I was. Getting rid of this one. Youth PSA. Let's show. Show. Oh, I got rid of. Oh, thank you, Carly. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's see. So, if I have reason to believe. If I have reason to believe I may be rescinded in the summer, would it make sense to double deposit? I think if you can bring those grades up in your final grade, I don't think you really have reason to believe you may be rescinded. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree with that. If 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 your second semester was was strong, then you probably don't need to worry about it. Uh, if they were going to rescind you, they would have done it after getting that mid-year report. So if the mid-year report is where the bad grades are and they don't rescind you by then, then you're probably fine. You're in the clear. But this is another reason why there's a small advantage to being able to reach out to them and just say, hey, just so you know, like I'm aware, I've kind of struggled in a couple of areas here. Here's some of the reasons why. Here's what, some of the things I'm doing mm -hmm. to address it. Some of the ways that I've tried to, uh, you know, really take ownership of this uh, and take responsibility for it. Uh, because then that starts the conversation, right? They'll come back to you and they'll say like, oh yeah, like, great. We're so happy for you. You know, please keep up the good work. Well, then that kind of tells you like, oh good. I think things are headed in the right direction. Whereas if they come back to you and they say like, oh man, this is, this is really terrible. Uh, you know, we'll, you're, you probably have no shot here, you know, anymore, then then that might give you a little bit better picture, right? Um, as far as double depositing goes, um, probably don't double deposit. Um, I, I have a hard time seeing a situation where one school would rescind you and another one would not. Like, most colleges have relatively similar. Standards. Yeah, they'd see your tanked grades. Exactly. So, so yeah. you know, unless it's like a super safety school or something, um, I don't. I don't know. I'd maybe need more information about the specifics of that. Yeah, I don't think I'd double deposit. I think I'd just get out ahead of it if you're really worried about it, youth. That would be the better strategy. You know, just I and, it, and honestly, even maybe just for your own anxiety, just to kind of go ahead, write the letter, explain what happened, explain that your grades are improving. And get it get it out there so you can be dealing with it. I for me, I know when I'm super feeling super anxious about something, I just have to do it or else it's gonna keep me awake at night. I don't know about you. So that would be my recommendation. All right. So let's see. So I'm gonna hide this one. I'm gonna show another one. Here we go. Hi guys, I had all A's last semester, AP and honors classes, and one C in AP Calc. Should I be worried? This is what Saunders says. I don't think so, but I want to hear what you have to say, Mark. Yeah, uh, probably you'll be fine. Um, again, it, where this could come into play is if you're if you've been accepted, uh, let's say to a math program, mm -hmm. uh, and and the all of your math grades have been stellar so far, and you were kind of a fringe candidate anyway. Like it could come where it causes them to question, like, wait, does this kid actually have what it takes to cut it right? Um, and, and is this C really a concern? But again, one C grade, I have a really hard time saying that they would step in and say like, no, you don't belong here. More likely what they would do is they would reach out and they would say, Hey, could you give us an explanation? Sort of like, uh, Carolyn Stan Stanford example, right? Um, d did you, you know, can you tell us what happened here? Explain, explain your situation. Uh, you know, and we just, we just want to make sure that, you know, what you're, what you're going through, what, what you're doing here is consistent with what our expectations are. Um, yeah. Yeah. And again, get out in front of it. If you want to get out in front of it, if you have a good explanation, then I would send it if I were you, you know, mm -hmm. just like short little email saying, you know, especially if you're a math or engineering or computer science major, um, you know, just saying, Hey, like, you know, I really struggled in AP Calc. This is why this is what I'm doing to get better. This is where my grades are now. Right now I have, you know, an 87 average or a 92, but you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of dealing with things mm -hmm. and kind of just moving forward instead of trying to push it down and pretend like it didn't happen. So that would be my advice to you. Um, okay. So I, I love, I'm going to do this one here. Thank you so much. Youth says you guys could probably produce. I'm really anxious right now, but you've really alleviated my stress. I will heed your advice and get out in front of it. That's great. And you can definitely reach out to me if you want help with kind of figuring out how to write your email or, or, you know, I, I can't speak for scholar grade, but um, I can speak for myself. So feel free to reach out to me if you want help kind of figuring out. 
Yeah, if you have questions, that. certainly uh, you can hit me up on Reddit or uh, Mark at BetterCollegeApps.com. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to help too. Um, I think that uh, one other thing to remember, again, colleges don't want to rescind you. They aren't looking, right. they aren't sitting here like, who can we catch making a mistake, right? That is not at all what their attitude is. Their attitude is, we've built this class. We spent months reviewing thousands of files to decide that this is the people we want. And like, they really don't want to have to change that unless there's something that's really upsetting the, the apple cart, right? That's really like, oh, this is not a good situation, right? And so what you really, you really have to remember that uh, this is not the same as, uh, you know, a C in calculus could be a red flag when they're discussing who should we be admitting because they have thousands of other people with, without C's in calculus, with A's in calculus, right? That they're declining. Um, but once they've admitted you, they aren't viewing that the same way. They aren't viewing this as, oh, well, we could just go back to any of these people that applied that we already said no to and just backfill with one of them because that's not how they operate. Uh, that's, that's no longer the, the, the process, right? The process now is uh, how could, what, in admissions offices, there's actually a switch they flip uh, after offers go out and the job changes. The admissions officer job actually changes. The job is no longer gatekeeper. It's no longer who, who do we want to admit? How are we building this class? It switches to how can we yield as many of these kids as possible? How can we convince these kids that this college is a great fit for them? How do we build our brand, uh, do our marketing, get students to really want to enroll and attend? Um, and every college is doing this. Uh, they even talked about this on the Yale Admissions podcast, that their job changes after offers go out to trying to engage students, get them to visit campus, get them to admit at student days, try to share with them all the ways that Yale could be the right place for them because they want everybody they admitted to come. Uh, now, obviously, somebody high enough up in the administration doesn't want that to happen because that would cause all kinds of other problems. So they know a certain number of people aren't going to, um, but they really do have a, a mandate within the admissions office to try to drive yield up um, because it does make enrollment management a lot easier. Uh, so you do have to think about this global perspective. They don't want to set, tell you no once they've told you yes. Uh, and so if you walk up to them and say, hey, guys, just so you know, I'm going through this. I have this problem. My grades have, have slipped a little bit. They aren't going to immediately say, you know, well, get out of here. We're going to go to somebody else. Uh, they're immediately going to say, well, let's see what we, what we need to do. Let's look at this a little bit closer. Is this something that we think is an issue or is it something that's like, eh, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Right. Um, that's that's kind of the direction you'll take. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So let's see what's next here. So, and also like if you have done something serious, so like, like this is like the serious stuff, like you've been expelled from school or mm -hmm. you've been arrested for drunk driving or you've got caught with drugs or you robbed a bank. I mean, whatever you did. And <laughs> um, the first three examples I have worked with kids from the fourth one I have not. And I, <laughs> but um, you are going to have to explain yourself. I mean, you are going to have to explain yourself if you're expelled or you're arrested and mm -hmm. you're going to have to just come clean and confront it and reach out because they're going to find out, I promise. Mm -hmm. So, and it's again going to be that you're going to have to like learn. So what I advise you to do, if you, if one of these situations happens to you and I really hope it doesn't, but if somebody's out there watching in a recording of this and you found this because something has happened to you, what you're going to have to do right, right away is get on to the learning part of this process. If it's been from drugs or alcohol, you need to get an Al-Anon or go see a therapist or start working with, um, you know, somebody to help you work through um, alcohol problems, even if you don't think you're addicted, you need to show that you're taking steps. If it's because you were expelled from school, you need to kind of address whatever the issues are. If you're having anger issues, if you're having therapy issues, but you need to start addressing it because in your letter that you write, you're going to have to talk about what you are doing to address this issue. Or if you're, um, if something comes back from social media and it has something to do with racist, something that you did, you're going to have to address how you're trying to learn from this. Mm -hmm. So just be really clear that you need to address it, but first start learning and then address it and write your letter. And mm -hmm. you're going to really have to show that growth and you're going to have to show them that because you have already dealt with these issues that so, so many people are going to be dealing with in college already because you've already dealt with these issues, because you've already gone through the learning experience that you're going to be able to add to their community. You're mm -hmm. going to have to, be, you know, but you're going to have to do the learning. You have right. to really do the learning. 
And Mark, what do you think about these like really yeah. tough, horrible situations? When yeah, so you know, and it, it does depend a little bit on the circumstances, right? Because there are some things that are like you're probably not coming back from it. Like if if you're about to get sent off to prison somewhere, like that, right. you're probably not going <laughs> to college in the fall, right? Um, and, and and there are certainly levels that this can go where our advice would be go talk to a lawyer, right? Because um, neither of us are. Um, the 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 big message is responsibility can go a long way. Um, showing that character growth, as admissions mom said, show them the phoenix, not the ashes. You don't want to come to them and say, look how horrible this was. You come to them and you say, look at everything that I learned and how much I grew and and all of the um, kind of growth and maturity that that uh, you know that I bring to the table now because I went through this. A um, couple of examples for you, admissions mom mentioned a few. Uh, you know, I had a student who was arrested um, for uh, illegal gambling, uh, mm -hmm. and obviously, like that's not necessarily the same level of um social stigma as some of the other you know some of these other issues but but still it's like you're arrested uh out of school suspension for a while because of it uh some some other things that happened and the student was able to explain kind of like how they got kind of increasingly roped into this how they've made some changes how they've learned a lot from it and uh and ultimately was able i think they ended up going to uh, an ivy league school so definitely was able to to come back from that. Uh, another student, and this one's a little bit different, was arrested um, for attending and organizing various protests. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the colleges had no problem with it at all. Right. Because in fact, they even released statements. This was a couple of years ago. There were several different protest movements uh, that were quite popular. And s colleges were releasing statements. Hey, if you get in trouble at a protest because you're protesting something, um, you know, that, that is really important to you, uh, and you're as long as you're, you know, obviously doing so in a in a in a way that's nonviolent, um, ideally, uh, they're not going to hold it against you, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, so there are there are some sometimes it, it's it is kind of a case by case thing. Uh, so I would say probably you'll want to think through what's the best way for me to present who I am to this school and what I offer, right? Because what you really want to show is I still have something great to add to your community. Right. Uh, even though I made a mistake, like guess what? Everyone has made mistakes, right? And, and they know that. They've all made mistakes too. Uh, it's not that they never make mistakes or that they're looking for people who are perfect. Uh, they're looking for people who are going to be a, a net positive to add to their community, right? And they've already identified you as one of those people if you've been given an offer of admission. So the, the burden is just to show that you're still worthy of that, right? Even though you've made this mistake, you still think that there's a lot, uh, you know, a lot of growth that can come out of that. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I will say, and I'm just going to put this here probably for more for people watching in the recording later, if you find this later, because you've had a big, a big issue. I do know of an amazing college consultant, um, in addition to scholar grade who really specializes in these cases. And if you reach out to me, I'll be happy to share their information with you. Um, I've sent a bunch of kids their way and it's kind of their specialty. And so I would definitely recommend, and she is a lawyer and a consultant. So I definitely recommend reaching out to her. Um, mm -hmm. if the, if you're in this situation where you've gotten into trouble in some kind of major way over, you know, more than grades. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So one other note on that is that, yeah. uh, finding, a, talking to your teacher, talking to a counselor, talking to someone who can, who can go to bat for you can also be helpful. So if the, your if your counselor can email the admissions office and say, hey, that's a great point. You know, alongside you stepping up and saying, you know, so part of another thing to add to your list of like, hey, if, I, if you're going to take ownership for this, if you're going to go in and and you're going to, you know, get out in front of it and you're going to to say, hey, here's what's happening in my life. Either I'm, my grades are kind of t tipping a little bit or uh, or I've gotten in this unfortunate situation. And, and you want to take ownership, you want to t show initiative, you want to show responsibility, you can do that. But then you can also go talk to your one of your recommenders, talk to your guidance counselor and say, hey, would you be able to reach out to the admissions office here and just give, tell them a little bit more of my side of the story, explain kind of what's going on, explain how I'm handling it and why, you know, a little bit more about the circumstances such that they end up with a positive kind of uh, assessment of it, um, because that can help a lot as well. Oh, 100%. Yeah, that's a great point to, to reach out to your school counselor. Um, and if you don't have one, and some of you are in international schools where you don't have school counselors, get a teacher to kind of, you know, talk about you on their behalf, on your behalf. Um, and so, okay, so what if, 
you know, the college has reached out to you. They've said, look, this is going to happen. You've written your letter. You've done your explanation. And it just doesn't work. Um, and that has happened to me. I have worked with a kid who um, wrote a great letter. But, you know, the what he had done was so offensive to the college that they were like, no, we're not going to. We're not going to let you in. So he was rescinded. Um, this was not a kid I had worked with earlier. This was a kid I, who came to me after he had issues. Um, so then what? What do you do? Like, I, I know what I would tell them to do, Mark, but I want to hear what you say. Sure. So um, the first thing I think you need to do is not panic. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very easy to think that you've spent the last four years of your life leading up to this point, but you haven't. You've spent the four last four years of your life developing a skill set and getting yourself educated. And so you have to remember that that sticks with you no matter what uh, an admissions office says to you. It's just uh, think about it like you've been rejected, right? Um, and, and so there are many different avenues to move forward. Um, one of the best ones is uh, to immediately go and look at uh, what colleges are still accepting applications because there are many other colleges uh, that accept applications late into the summer and some even into the fall, uh, many of which offer incredible educational opportunities. Uh, I know of several state schools that will ac accept applications in July and in August for enrollment in, in late August or September. Um, and sometimes they'll even have financial aid available. So it's definitely worth, as soon as you realize, oh no, this is going south on me, uh, check those out because if the deadline is in a week for a school that you'd be really excited about, like put together an application, try. Uh, and then when you, excuse me, when you do that, there's a disciplinary information section in the common app. There's also a um, additional information section, probably best if you went ahead and explained a little bit about yeah. this, so that they don't just discover the same thing. And then you go through the whole process and you've just delayed it by another yeah. four months. Um, the second thing you can do is you can think about uh, things like taking a gap year, going to a community college, doing something that sort of puts a little more time distance um, between this, because one thing that colleges uh, really do believe in is that your more recent performance is more indicative of what you're going to be like on their campus than whatever happened in the past. So this is one reason why, for example, Stanford doesn't even look at freshman year grades. Uh, the University of California heavily underweights freshman year grades in admissions. Uh, many colleges do this. They're, they're not as concerned about what your grades were like freshman year. They probably wouldn't be as concerned about some kind of, you know, um, incident or something that happened years ago as if it just happened a few weeks ago. Um, because what they're really thinking is uh, not, again, the standard is not perfection. The standard is, do we think this is someone who can add something to our community and really be a good a good fit? Um, and so you can do that. You can go to community college uh, and, and transfer. You can take a gap year and apply again some other places. You can um, you know, try to look into what other options you might have. There's nothing wrong with taking a gap year. A lot of students think that that's somehow a failure or an indictment of them. Uh, I actually recommend it for several uh, different types of students, one of them being international students who's... Um, whose application profile might have certain deficiencies because of the way their educational system is set up in their country. That's not their fault at all. Um, it just means that there's they might have better odds and better opportunities if they take that gap year. So you don't need to feel like uh, all of a sudden your entire life is going to be a year behind schedule. Like there's no schedule, right? Um, if, if, you, if you graduate from, from college at 26 or you graduate at 22, well, when you're 26, you still have a degree either way. And like, you're going to be 26 someday. So you might as well have a degree when you're 26, right? Like you don't need to think about this as, as comparing yourself to others, like set your own goals, identify what success looks like for you, and then figure out the steps it takes to get there. Um, so, so that's probably uh, the, the, the big points. Um, certainly if there are things that you know are problematic that need addressing, then address them, right? So as admissions mom noted, if, if part of what caused your problem was substance abuse, try to get help, try to figure out what's going on here. Is this really something that I want in my life? Is this really something that I need to have uh, as, a, as a, a, an issue that I'm continuing to deal with? Uh, or is this something that I wanna go ahead and tackle right now? Uh, and maybe you take that opportunity. If it's something where, um, you know, there's some kind of, uh, uh, again, patterned behavior um, or, or just uh, other personal weakness, like you, you, you don't have to be the same person for the rest of your life. Like you can change. And I think that uh, the first step is recognizing, hey, there's a problem here and I need to address it. Uh, so I would encourage you to do that. Uh, and then, you know, I think from there, it's just following the playbook of, of figuring out, okay, what is my goal? How do I want to get there? And then working backwards, uh, what are the steps that, that are going to maximize my chances of landing it? 
Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm just going to reinforce what you said about kind of taking the time to really learn about yourself and really like dig in, especially if you've had major disciplinary issues or certainly legal issues, you know, really decide that maybe you do need a gap year to learn more, to focus on whatever it was that was causing you to have these, I'm talking major disciplinary issues. I'm not talking, you know, like little ones um, or to get in legal problems, really like take the time to think about like how you can start learning more about yourself and how you can start making steps to work out to um, move forward with uh, learning and growing from this experience. Because as Scholar Grade said, you're not, you don't have to be that person forever. You can grow and change and that's what humans do. And this one day, you know, being rescinded will just be, you know, a bad experience in your life that you have overcome. And, you know, and you are going to be stronger for it, I promise. And you will be able to go to college. And there's many paths to getting there. So, and for those of you who, um, you know, we've talked a lot about the bad stuff, right? And I, I like as, um, as you know, kind of like being upside down, right? Like that's the upside down world of emissions. Like it's the bad stuff that we don't want to talk about. And so I want you to know that it's really not common, right? If you basically, if you keep up your grades and if you're a nice person and you're kind to others, more than likely nothing is going to happen. You know, just don't be stupid. So mm -hmm. three things. Keep up your grades. Be nice. Don't be stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, if you take care of those three things, you're going to be fine and you have nothing to worry about. I want to bring up one other little thought on sure. this. Uh, and this is something I've worked with, um, I would say, I think like six students in the last four years on. Uh, and all of them reached out to me through applying to college subreddit um, because I had said something about this. Um, and I uh, that is students who have not really done anything. They've kept their head down. They've kept their grades up. They've, they've not, they've been nice and they've not been stupid, but then someone else decided that they wanted to try to, uh, fabricate, uh, some kind of case against them. Oh, wow. So they maybe edited screenshots or they, uh, tried to instigate something. They tried to set the person up. Various things have happened, right? Uh, taking a, taking a, um, um, pl planting evidence that the student was cheating in a class, you know, whatever, like various things. Like, again, for whatever reason, people sometimes get over competitive and petty and, and really, really toxic with each other uh, when it comes to college admissions. And so uh, there have even been reports. Uh, I've had students who have told me that uh, other students have reached out to colleges and just made stuff up about them. Um, and they're worried. Is this student, are they going to just decide, oh, well, we don't want this guy in our class because we got this random uh, anonymized email saying that he committed this terrible thing. And uh, so I, I wanted to address that briefly. Uh, it, it, that is rare as well. Uh, if that is you, uh, your first step needs to be talk to your guidance counselor and say, Hey, this is what happened, right? This is who told me these things. Here's everything I know. Uh, I need you to help me, uh, because the counselor is going to really be able to dig in. They're going to be able to talk to that person. They're going to be able to potentially engage the person's parents. They're going to be potentially able to engage the colleges you've applied to and kind of set the record straight. There will be a little bit of discovery. So where they're going through the process of identifying what is the evidence, what is going on, what's the real story here. Uh, but once they've done that, um, they will, they will try to set the record straight and try to try to set things right. Um, the next thing I think that's important is that you don't escalate, right? You don't need to try to get even. You don't need to try try to, um, uh, you know, somehow uh, establish justice in the world. Like that's not your goal. Your goal is to, to get out of this uh, free, right? Free and clear. So, uh, so don't escalate. Don't try to get back at them. Don't try to, you know, um, you know, go with the nuclear option. Uh, nobody wins in that scenario. Um, and then the last thing that I would say is, again, be proactive. So if, uh, if you need to, you can like I said, talk to your counselor, talk to your teachers, see, you know, see if they recommend reaching out to the college to, to explain that, you know, this is what's happening and it's being handled at your school internally and there's nothing to worry about or, or whatever that is. And again, ideally that's coming from the counselor. Uh, anything you want to add on that, on that sort of odd question? Yeah. You know, I've never had that specific experience. I have worked with a kid um, who had somebody sent videos of him from when he was in ninth grade um, doing some really inappropriate stuff and sent those to the colleges and he actually ended up being rescinded for it. Um, 
And um, yeah, so you just like never know what's out there. This kid had completely forgotten about the situation. Um, so I guess the main thing I would be, and this is kind of, this is a little bit certainly different, but take ownership if if you are, like if something does happen and you're caught somehow, like this kid was, take ownership of it. Don't shift the blame to the other people mm -hmm. because you're going to have to show that like what you have learned, what you have grown, where you have mm -hmm. um worked through. And I think that was, it, it certainly took him by surprise, but he had to like really learn to kind of accept that this happened. And then he had to show how he'd grown since then. Okay. So, um, that's it with our slides. We have a couple more questions we're going to answer here. Let's see. Uh, Saul, there you go. Saul says, if I'm waitlisted, will I need to send second semester grades? I, yeah, I think so. Probably. Right. Because they're going to everybody's going to want your final transcript no matter what. Yep. Every college. Yep. So. And in fact, this can be a strength for you if you want to, if you want it to be. So you can tell your your guidance counselor, hey, make sure you send my transcript to these schools because I did good in these classes. And then when you write that letter of continued interest, one of your bullet points or one of your, your little, little talking points can be uh, that you've continued ac strong academic performance because that's important to you or that you have continued to deeply pursue the various academic subjects that are so inspiring and that you're so passionate about. Right. Uh, and, and that that's part of the package of, of what you bring to the table and how you would contribute contribute to the college community. Um, so I think that can be definitely something to lean into. Um, if your second semester grades are bad, then probably don't make that a highlight of your of your letter of continued interest. However, you probably still are going to have to send them. So, you know, best of luck, I guess. is Because yeah. you have to send your final transcript yes. in order to start getting enrolled. So they're right. going to want to see those grades. Yep. Um, and then our next um, last question, where can I reach out to admissions mom or scholar grade to read over a heads up email and will I be charged? Um, I'll put my admissions mom to see gmail.com. I'll be happy to read over. Um, I'll be happy to read over it for you and just kind of give you some thoughts. My only thing is I don't read essay. I don't read anything that's not in a Google doc and that doesn't give me permission to comment. I'm really strict about that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not, it's not, that's not my, I gotta have to focus here. Admissions mom, A2C at gmail.com. This one, um, scholar, do you want me to type yours in? Sure. It's just mark at bettercollegeapps.com. Yeah. And I, I, I would not charge you to take a quick look at it and say like, yep, that looks good. Or like, mm, change this. Right. That's, that's not a big deal. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, for sure. I, I would, I would be happy to. And so I mean, would mark, if, if so. you want to meet, if you want to meet for an hour and talk about it, I don't think you need that, but then like we could talk about it, but I, I, I'm not going to charge you for just looking at that. I, I get questions all the time, uh, both on Reddit and to my, to my inbox. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I do my best to answer as many of them as I can. Good. All right. So let me figure out how to, I'm, I'm learning how to do this, bringing the, the, the comments up because I love y'all's comments so much. Um, so I just wanted to like tell those of you in our chat, thank you so much for being so participatory and asking amazing, amazing questions. Um, so we are going to do a little meditation here at the end because Part of what I really want to do is bring mindfulness and intention into college admissions. And a big reason for that, so then so that's why I have this, we're going to talk about college admissions and then stop and take a breath. It's really important to me. If you're not comfortable meditating, I can't see you, so you don't have to do it. Um, but, you know, I'd love for you to just do like a minute with me of just like sitting and doing it. Mark, I know you said you might have to go to take care of your kids. Yes, so. I do. So I'll, yeah. be, I'll be dropping off, but thank you so much for having me. Uh, it was a pleasure and uh, definitely uh, look forward to continuing to work with you uh, in the future. Yeah. Thank you so, so, so much for being here. It was awesome having you and I will definitely have you back to share your wisdom with us all. And um, yeah, just let me know when you want to come back. You're welcome. <laughs> all right, Carly, you want to hop on with me? Yeah, Hi. Carly's here. Hi, everybody. Um, so we are going to do just one minute because we're kind of going long tonight. I'm trying to get these to 45 minutes. I'm going to really start working on that. But you guys have so many amazing questions that I just want to be able to answer them all. So what I'd like for you to do, I'm going to get my bowl. Hold on one second. Let me grab it. I like to introduce my bowl. It's from Nepal. If we have any 
everybody out here from Nepal, from Nepal. And um, we are just going to like get your feet grounded. Go ahead and kind of just like sit. You can close your eyes if you want to, or you can leave them open. It's up to you. And I'm going to just say some words and I want you to repeat them after me in your head. And we're just going to do one round of this. So just go ahead and close your eyes and I want you to breathe while you do this. So just repeat these words after me. I am who I am. This is what it is. May I accept things as they are. May I trust in the unfolding. And then take a deep breath. And then let it out. I'm going to hit my bowl. And I want you to hold on to that sound as long as you possibly can. And then you can gently open your eyes. All right, let's do a little stretch, kind of just like move our bodies around. I've been sitting in this chair. Carly's been sitting there. Um, again, thank you all so much for being here. Carly, thank you so much for your help. And um, look forward to seeing you next week. We are going to have, I think, at least four of our A2C moderators on here with us to talk about. Uh, thanks, Azrath. Um, I'm going to bring that up. Yeah, thanks, Base. Based unexpected guided meditation. That was neat. I'm going to be doing a lot more of those. That's one of my things that I like to do. I'm actually a meditation teacher in addition to an con um, educational consultant. Um, so next week, we're going to have our A2C mods and I'm um, going to talk about A2C and what it is and kind of get their advice about college admissions and everything that, you know, why they're part of it and why they want to be a part of it and learn a lot. Carly's going to be here with us as a guest next week. And we'll have McNeil Admissions and a couple of others. And um, so hope you all will join us six o'clock uh, Central Time. And yeah, thanks so much. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to end the broadcast now and really appreciate you. Bye bye. Bye.